In Psalm 119 and verse 162, David says, I rejoice at your word as one who finds great spoil. And then in verse 164, he says, Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous judgments or righteous ordinances. We rejoice at God's word because it is valuable. We've already seen in this psalm, therefore, I love your commandments above gold. Yes, above fine gold. In another psalm, David explained in more detail why the word of God is valuable. He said, The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, they are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold, yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11. Now notice from this what the Word of God does. Notice it says that the Word of God restores the soul, bringing us back into a right relationship with God. God's Word makes us wise so that we might know what we should do. God's Word rejoices the heart, bringing us true joy. God's Word enlightens the eyes so that we might gain understanding. God's Word endures forever and will not pass away. And God's Word is true and righteous, providing the perfect standard for us to follow. David then wrote seven times a day, I praise you. Now there are many reasons to praise God, but in this context he was focusing on the Word of God. Now, seven is seen as a complete or perfect number. Rather than referring to an actual number of times that he would praise God, he described himself as being completely and continually given over to praise. Now, this should describe each one of us as well. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name, Hebrews 13:15. But also, we must recognize the distinction between truth and error. In verse 163, David said, I hate and despise falsehood, but I love your law. We must first recognize that there is a difference between truth and error. Truth is objective, not subjective. The sum of your word, the totality of your word is truth. God's law, not whatever man might think is the way of truth, but God's law is truth. You remember the example of Naaman? When he was told to do something that he really didn't want to do, that he didn't expect to be told to do, he was upset. And he said, Behold, I thought. He thought that there was a better way. But we must remember that what we think is really irrelevant if it is contrary to what God has said. Our attitude should not be one of compromise, tolerance, or double-mindedness when it comes to handling truth and error. David said, I hate and despise falsehood. And we must be able to say the same thing as well. If we firmly believe that God's word is the truth, that will affect our attitude toward error. Remember the reasons why we praise God for his word. Error does the opposite of truth. As the truth restores the soul, Error separates us from God. As the truth makes us wise, error makes us foolish. As the truth rejoices the heart, error causes sorrow. As the truth enlightens the eyes, error darkens our understanding. As the truth endures forever, error passes away. As the truth provides us with the perfect standard of righteousness, error leads us down a path of wickedness. So as we consider this list, friends, we can clearly see that it is a very serious matter for us to be able to distinguish between truth and error. Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our program today, and may God bless you with a wonderful day.